I started writing uh, probably four years ago now, um, and it took me two years to write it. I, uh, previously to that, I'd, I'd taken some writing classes and uh, joined a writer's group and uh, started on this project. And I, I wrote the first section, and uh, it was kind of a coming of age story, but it was incomplete. I felt like the story hadn't been properly told, and uh, the character, although he developed, I, I hadn't given him the challenges that I wanted to give the character. So I, I spent two years writing and revising and, and uh, handing it out and, and to readers and, and getting input and making changes. And finally got to the point where I, I really felt I, I was done. You know, the story had been told and I was happy with it and, and I didn't think I could take it any further. So I passed it out to uh, readers and friends and friends of friends and people I didn't know and just to see what was going to come back. And uh, they liked it. People liked the story. They got caught up in it and, uh, and wanted more, actually. The, if there was one thing that everybody kind of said was, when's the next one? So I knew I was on to something, I, or I really felt I was on to something. I wasn't quite honestly expecting that I would be as engrossed as quickly as I was in the book, uh, but I found that I literally couldn't put it down and it was keeping me awake at night because I always wanted to read more. And it, it really gets exciting. I remember I was reading it at 2.30 in the morning and I just kept reading. It was like 4.30 and I was still reading because I wanted to see what was going to happen. Just kind of, I could not put the book down. <laughs> it was really good. So at that point, I, I went through the proper process and, and submitted to publishers and agents and, and query letters. And, and uh, the, the query process is you write a query letter, which is an art in itself, and hope that somebody's going to answer and, and tell you that uh, they'd like to read your book. And some, some of them did. Some of them wanted to read the first three chapters. Some of them wanted to read more. Some of them wanted to read the, the whole thing. I ended up submitting to, I think it was about 130 publishers and agents, and nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted to publish my book, um, which is fine. You know, my, my temporary life is hard to pigeonhole. Um, it's, it crosses a lot of different genres. It's, uh, it's a romance, it's a coming of age story, it's a suspense, it's a thriller. Uh, and, and I think one of the problems that publishers had was, what do I do with this thing? You know, what shelf do I put it on? How do I market it? So I, it, it was a business decision. I can respect that. And nobody wanted to publish it. But I still felt I had a pretty good book. I was surprised at, at the complexity of the characters and, and everything. I mean, I like anything to do with the UK, and that's where the characters started. I love the characters. I really, I really like the way he started with um, Malcolm and Hardly's relationship. The, the character named Hardly, he had such a hard time, and uh, you know, I think looking back, you always knew a kid like that in school. You know that it, the the bullying, the the things that people do to each other. I think we can all kind of empathize with that. I mean, I think it's happened to everyone. And I, I can relate to that because the same scenario was happening with me. It was interesting, the, his father and his mother in that situation. And his father was quite interesting. He did the best he could uh, under the circumstances that he was given. It, I, I normally don't read fiction, and I, I loved it. it. It grabbed me right from the beginning, and, and I, uh, I couldn't stop reading it. So I self-published. Um, I self-published, and uh, I researched how to do that, and uh, ended up going through Amazon and uh, their book was released last December, but I jumped on board 100% with Amazon in February, and I released through uh, KDP Select, which is a, an arm of Amazon, and uh, it's actually a fairly simple process. I, uh, I hired a formatter, and, and I'd already had the book edited, and uh, edited over and over again, actually. So uh, we put it out and, um, and went through an Amazon promotion in late February, and the promotion is uh, you give your book away. For three days, you give your book away to anybody that wants it for free. Um, so for a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I gave my book away. And, and really, when I get back to the root of why I wanted to do this, I wanted people to read my book. 
you know, when you're, you're, when I was a little kid in school back in Scotland and I'd write stories, all I wanted was people to read them. So now here was this opportunity for people to read my book. So I thought, maybe I'll get like a thousand people that might download my book for free and then they've read it and who knows what might happen from there. Um, in that three day period, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, 54,000 people download. Yeah, I know. 54,000 people downloaded my book. It was insane, just insane. We hit number one on Amazon's uh, free rankings, so we jumped over um, the Hunger Games, Twilight, like huge bucks, and we were at number one. I heard about my temporary life online. I have a friend who is um, in a book club with Martin and she shared his free download. I think I, it just came up on the Amazon Lending Library and it was right after getting my Kindle. I read My Temporary Life the first time in an ebook. But I do have the paperback too. Uh, I got his book. It was actually the first book I, I downloaded onto my iPhone using the Kindle app. I was about to buy a Kindle. My Temporary Life grabbed me from the first page. It's full of twists and turns, which I really liked. Uh, it was a great distraction, a really good story, and... Oh my god, it was great, and I, um, I actually read it in one night. I stayed up all that night. Martin can tell a story, and it's just like sitting in a room, listening to somebody tell a story. I like a book that I can get lost, quote, I can just get into the book, and I become part of the story. And... Martin takes you there. It was almost, for me, more like watching a movie than reading a book. Martin tells the story as if he's talking to me, not writing it. I experienced oohs and ahs, and you know, if somebody would have seen me reading the book, they probably thought it would have been very amusing because I was actually talking back to the book. And uh, so then the key thing is, is the day after. You know, this, all this momentum builds and, and you wonder what's going to happen when it becomes paid. So Monday was the paid, so I finally got some sleep on the Sunday night and uh, woke up and I thought, you know, maybe I'll have sold like 30 bucks, which would have been great. And I woke up and I'd sold 170 bucks overnight uh, all over the UK, Canada, United States. Um, so I somehow went to work that day and um, throughout the day ended up selling 700 bucks. Um, the second day was kind of the peak day and we sold over 2,000 copies, ebooks of My Temporary Life. We went to number six overall on Amazon's paid rankings um, and as, as the week went on we just kept selling lots of books. We were the number six most downloaded um, indie book of the week. Um, we hit all, just all kinds of rankings and charts. It was super exciting and, and things went kind of crazy. We were, I was getting phone calls from TV station in Dallas, Texas that had heard about it. Um, I was profiled on a breakfast show in the UK and it just kept building. The, the Globe and Mail, which is Canada's second largest newspaper, did a full page story on on me and my book and, and the process that it took. Um, little community newspapers from all over wanted to write about it. And uh, all the time, we're just holding on to this book that I'd written in the spare bedroom in my house. Um, so as, when the dust settled um, to today, which is five months from, from when I went with Amazon in February, we have 126,000 ebooks have been downloaded by people and um, a few hundred print books, but most people seem to, to prefer the ebook. Sorry, how many ebooks? Yeah, I know, it's crazy. 126,000. Um, now, a lot of those we've given away, but over 20,000 of them were actual paid sales. Um, so, a lot of people have my book, and, and that was all I wanted at the beginning. I wanted people to read my book, and they have. Um, very blessed. It's been great. Well, I think that he knew that he had a quality product, and I think that he knew that uh, people would want to read it. Uh, it's just unfortunate that conventional publishers respond the way that they do. Hey, it's awesome, totally. I mean, why not leave the traditional way, and if that's the way people are 
reading now. I bought a Kindle. I downloaded it on my Kindle. Hey, all the more power to him, man. I, I, uh, I totally admire the guy for doing that and persevering. <laughs> I can't believe he did what he did. I think that's amazing. I think it's an absolutely amazing story. Um, I, I, all the power to him because uh, I, I'm not sure I would have ever had the perseverance to, to keep going with it. Well, I think if you want something, you go for it. Uh, but I think that he realized that uh, the only option open to him, or the most viable option, was to, uh, if you can't get somebody to do it for you, to do it yourself. And I was uh, very impressed by his ingenuity and uh, his resourcefulness and his diligence uh, at, at, at accomplishing that. I think that, that speaks volumes about his tenacity. Reviews are good. <laughs> the reviews are good. Every time a new review comes in, I, I kind of tense up a little bit and scroll down on the computer to get to it to see just how, how uh, the reader is going to react to it. Um, the reviews are good. I have over 100 uh, five-star reviews, uh, which is just fantastic. I was, I was uh, nominated for a Book Readers Appreciation Group medallion, um, which was a real honor um, because that's, that's readers voting on it. Um, I have a 4.6 out of 5 rating on Amazon and uh, people pour their heart into reviews. They, they, feel, um, they feel the emotions in the story sometimes and they, they tell you how they feel. So I've had the reviews, I've had messages through Facebook, through Twitter, um, through different social networks which really is how word of this book spread was, was because I, I was on those social networks spreading the word about it. And, and one person would tell another and it, and it just spread. Um, the reviews for the first 20 or 30 were very, very nice. And then it seems something happened. Um, people started really feeling the emotion uh, that are within the, the story and started telling me about how it affected them. Um, I did a race a couple of months ago. And after the race, uh, Jackie and I were sitting in my car and uh, of course I checked my reviews on my phone and uh, there were a couple of new reviews and we were bawling our eyes out because they're, they're such heartfelt things that people say and for them to take the time to write to you and say these things is just amazing. So I'm very, very lucky, you know, with the reviews. Uh, it, it's an independent book and it's my first book and, uh, and I've been really, really fortunate. People like the book. Just, it was, it was so good, like I just, I loved, I loved every page of it, I loved it. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't put it down. <laughs> When's the next one? <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs>